Hey, Business Building Warrior, this is your host, Jim. Welcome to Silent Sales Machine Radio. I've got a couple that I'm going to bring on, a married couple who are ramping up so quickly. They're proven Amazon course students, and they've also invested in our coaching program. There's links to both of those at silentgym.com. You can jump over there and get a quick link to both those programs. But the thing that's so impressive about this couple today is they've only been doing this since around November of last year. So here we are in March of 2023 as I'm recording this. So just less than four or five months ago, they were discovering this opportunity. They heard our podcast. They saw a couple of videos on YouTube. They jumped into our free Facebook group, which by the way, there's over 72,000 members in our free Facebook group. There's a link again at silentgym.com you can get into our free Facebook group and see for yourself 1,600 tagged success posts, for example, of students using the strategies we teach on this podcast to build beautiful businesses. So if this is your first episode today, man, you've picked a good one. If you've never heard our show before, it's going to make you want to listen to some of the other dozens of recent success story interviews that we've conducted. We've got hundreds of them over the past couple of years. We're very proud of that. We've worked very hard. We have a large team of people supporting this community, coaches, content creators, administrators, support staff, the people who run my warehouse and run my Amazon selling business and the whole team that we have as well of coaches who are doing this business at a high level and spend some of their time coaching other students on how to do the same thing. That's what this community is all about. And today we're going to meet David and Shirley or again, there are a couple who've only been doing this a few months, but check this out. Their first full month after they started coaching, they hit nearly six figures in sales at 25% net margin. That's phenomenal. It's an incredible success story. They ramped up very quickly. They found a couple hundred profitable products that they could sell. And that happened to be a December, which yeah, December is the busiest shopping month of the year. That was their first full month. So things trailed off a little bit as we got into 2023, but they still had incredible sales in January and in February. And here we are in March, still having very high five-figure sales per month at great net margins. They've built a beautiful business. They're finding profitable inventory like crazy. And they're also starting to expand on their momentum with some other business models that we'll discuss as well today. Something that stood out today, this is going to just jump out to you as well, I would think. They're working full time, both of them. Now, Shirley has just last month, February of 2023, about three to four months into their adventure, she quit her full time job. But at the time that they had a six, nearly six figure month, their second month of doing this, their first full month of doing this business model, the Amazon Replens model that we teach in the Proven Amazon course. They were both working full time with the young child. And they say he's a very high energy, high maintenance kid, right? Like I had one of those too. I know exactly what they're talking about. Like the, a kid like that can be as much work as three quiet kids. <laughs> like, so they've got this crazy schedule. They've got a, a anxious, high energy kid who needs a lot of attention. God bless them. They're doing it all, and building a beautiful business. How incredible is that? So that's the couple you're going to meet today. I invited them to the Proven Conference towards the end of today's interview. I think I've got them almost talked into it based on the conversations we had after the recording was off. But if they can't make it, I sure hope that you can because you can come meet face-to-face -face hundreds of the great success story interviews that you've heard on this podcast, the coaches that you've seen in our community, the great members of our Facebook group from all over the world who are doing the models that we teach in our community. Come hang out with several hundred of us. July 6th through 8th, 2023 in Columbus, Ohio. We'd love to have you there. All the details are at the website. Remember these three words for the website, The Proven Conference. Theprovenconference.com is the website. Come join us. We'd love to have you there. Hey, let's jump over and meet David and Shirley. You are going to be so inspired and pick up so many great specific tips. I mean, Shirley even talks about how she lays in bed at night sometimes with just her smartphone. Amazon.com pulled up on her smartphone and finds winning replens using just one app. And we tell you about that today. It's a great tip. So many good strategies in today's episode. You're going to be inspired. Enjoy. So David and Shirley, <laughs> welcome to the podcast. Thank you. Thank you, Jim. Thank you. 
It's certainly great to meet you guys, and I'm excited to get into your story. You ready to go, David? Yes, we are. Let's go. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. So, um, you know, thank you for having us on the uh, the podcast. Yeah, we, we never imagined that that we will be on uh, your podcast, Jim. And so, yeah, uh, our story, um, how we started with the Amazon FBA um, businesses. Well, you know, we always knew about it. We heard about it from YouTube videos and from you know like facebook videos but we never really you know considered doing it or um thought about that business model and then so i think i mean just towards the middle of last year or the end of last year is when we you know we saw the video and then we, we just thought about you know we talked together about it and i think surely uh she was introduced to some uh a group on facebook right uh, honey yeah um and so um yeah that's that's when she she was so you know she, she was more interested in it and so she talk me into it as well. And so that's when we, um, you know, we decided to let's just try it out. Yeah, we always like doing business. Um, and so we, we wanted to build something for, for ourselves, for our family. And, uh, you know, we, we both were full-time jobs. So we, still, I, you still I think, right now yeah, both have full-time jobs, correct? Uh, surely recently, uh, back in January, was it honey? Or February, February. Yeah. Back yeah she, last she, month. She, uh, yeah, she quit her job. <laughs> Congratulations. Um, okay, yeah, I didn't catch so, that in the bio. I, maybe you mentioned it or maybe I missed it, but that's an awesome achievement. So you went from yeah. both of you having full-time jobs to now you're at home. So, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Uh, so I'm the only one, um, I have a full-time job. Uh, my job is, is actually very, um, it's very laid back. And so uh, that's why it's more free time to to do the business. But uh, yeah, yeah, surely okay. it's, um, you know, we're glad to have her. She has more time to focus on the business. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so yeah, we wanted to build a, a business, and so we felt like this is a good um, business to to get into um, after seeing a lot of success stories. And yeah. we know it's going to be a struggle, you know, building a business, but we feel like it's something that we can build for the, for our future. That's great. So you found you found our Facebook group, is that correct? Yes. That's where you started. Yes. Then okay. Yes. We actually, I I ran into one of your your clip that you mentioned. Yeah, because at the beginning, when we the videos, listen to yeah. YouTube, it's, they're all about private labels. Yeah, right. Yeah, so one of your video, um, you mentioned, if you're new, do not do private label. That's right. Um, do replan and such, and et cetera. And I thought, you are so real. You are, you're right. You know, this is, this is actually very, very real. And, 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 and that's when I get more and more into your group and, get more information about pack courses and yeah just everything and i feel like this is such a, a wealth of information i remember the day when uh, she talked you know she introduced me into the uh, the pack because uh, you know she was asking me if we, we want to join the pack course because there's, there's a fee for that you know so yeah. um yeah she said this is seemed like they're very knowledgeable uh they're very uh, down to earth people and um um it's a very trustworthy uh, group to join and so yeah. that's when we decided to uh sign up with the pack horse. No, 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 no. It's, it's unusual to meet people who started out with us. The start of their e-commerce e journey was with us. It's unusual because like you said, there's so much out there. And if right. you get on YouTube and start researching business ideas, the odds of you finding us as your first adventure is very rare. So that's, that's great. I love to hear it. Uh, yeah, in terms of we do. Uh, course, your pack was the first one that we ever really? uh, signed up for any, any yeah. courses uh, online, yeah. Pretty unusual. It really is unusual because there's so much noise out there and that's great. And I hopefully hopefully you guys uh, appreciate that you, you kind of navigated a jungle there of, of other pitfalls and, and yeah. disasters to find. And there's other great people out there for sure. You know, yeah. we're not the only community that's operating with integrity right. and yeah. results and success stories, but I would say we're in the minority for sure, on the opportunity. So that's awesome. I didn't realize your story started with well, us. Yeah, what, what, set, what set your courses apart from everyone is you have everything in one place. I right. mean, if I if I want to learn about Kipa, there's Kipa uh, course, that, you know, for, for video for it. If we, I want to learn about shipping replants. or, you know, or replan, it's all in there. So, and that that's how, that's how we, we, we start to explore that's how we started to like let's do amazon and learn it as we go like yeah so i mean we started out and we weren't very confident with a lot of things you know of course you know we're new to it and so you know we weren't very confident with reading keep this because there's so much variation and there's so many different keep charts 
And we have an understanding, but uh, our confidence wasn't there. And then the course helped us feel more confidence, you know, and, and yeah, that, that pretty much helped us with our business at the beginning. Um, yeah, well, thank, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Well, I, I want to I want to start diving into your story a little bit more from the aspect of, you know, what are you guys doing? How you've got a full time job. You've got a, a young child. Did you say it, it was a son, right? Um, yeah, a son. Yeah, right? he was three, uh, three years, uh, you know, when, when we started the business. He's, and turned, he's four. turned four in January. Yes, right. And yeah, he's, he's a we love him. he's a handful. He's a lot of energy. <laughs> right. Um, but our, we, we, you know, we, our first we kid was the same way. So I, I know that's a full-time job right there, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So you guys have a lot going on, but you've you've been able surely to come home now. And this is, you know, this adventure just started, what, uh, you know, October, October, November last year. Yeah. So here we are in March of 2023. You guys aren't that far into this yet. You know, yeah, not at all. Five, six months, maybe. Right. And you're getting some tremendous results, which is what led to us inviting you onto the show today. So, right. so let's dive into your business a little bit. What are you guys doing? What's your routine? Um, just keep the story going. Yeah, yeah. So we started out, um, you know, uh, in October. Our first sale was yeah. October 15th. Yeah, of okay. last year. Yeah. yeah, I think October we did um, over a thousand, right? Mm-hmm. Um, so and it was a, a lot of, yeah, it was first month. Yeah. Wow. That's um, 8,000 your first month. That's amazing. No, no, no. I'm sorry. 1,000. 1,000 our first month. Oh, 1,000. They said eight. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that makes yeah. more sense for your yeah. first month. Yeah. Okay. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's, you know, starting out the business, you have to set things up. You have to um, learn a lot of things. And so, you know, we were able to uh, start up our, our first products and, 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 uh, yeah, it was fourth quarter, so we did um, a lot of we did FBA mostly. Well, we start we started with FBA, but it was a slow start. I mean, it took uh, weeks oh, yeah. for our products to to arrive, and we even lost some products at um, the beginning um, that they they didn't receive properly. So right. um, we were a little frustrated uh, at the beginning. So so November was when I think we joined the coaching program. We were stopped. It was, stopped, it was right? December. It was December. December. Yeah, okay, December when we joined. Uh, uh, yeah, the coaching. But uh, uh, no- November, um, we joined PAC. And so we learned that yeah. uh, it, it improved our, our sales in, you know, 1,000 in October to, I think it was 7,000, over 7,000 in in November. Mm-hmm. And so as we grew, we felt like we need more help uh, yeah. to grow faster. And we, and we heard also from from your courses, you know, if you guys want to, if we want to grow faster, you need... Uh, a coach to uh, help you do that. Yeah. yeah. So right. that's what we say is it shortens the learning curve. You can do this right. without a coach, right. but yeah. it'll right. speed up your progress dramatically to have somebody walking you through the steps, kind of holding your hand is, is making yeah. your progress much more happen much more fast. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And in a way, it, you know, like I say, it, it built our confidence. Um, sure. A lot of things, uh, a lot of aspects of the business. And so, and yeah, that's why that's means why in uh, beginning of December, we, we joined the, uh, oh, the end of November, beginning of December, we joined the uh, the coaching program through uh, to you, to you, you guys. Uh, the the yeah, yeah, very proud of that program for sure. And for those who are interested, for the listeners today, you can get to silentgym.com. You'll see a link to our coaching program and just have a conversation with us, see if it's a good fit. But you said something, guys, about uh, Merchant Fulfill, FBM. I want to make sure the mm-hmm. listeners know what we're talking about there. You guys have done a fair amount of fulfilling your own orders. And before you guys describe why you did that and how you got into it, I just want to make sure the listeners understand today that you have two options when selling on Amazon. You can send all your inventory to Amazon and they'll send it to the buying customers as it sells, or you can keep it all in your garage and or in your spare bedroom and you can ship it as it sells. That's called Merchant Fulfill or FBM. Most people tend to shy away from FBM but it sounds like you guys embraced it and got pretty busy. Talk us through that. Well, you? Yeah, we had to. <laughs> um, so, you know, Shirley mentioned that we started by trying to do FBA. Uh, we sent in a, a box, I think, right? Um, and we sent in a box to Amazon and it took them over a month, almost a month yeah. and a half for them to even receive it, to log it in the system before... Mm-hmm. And then they, they lost our, some of our items. <laughs> right. So we had to find a way Very to... Very frustrating. Sure yes, yeah, it, it was a frustrating process for the first starting out. And then we also uh, you know, heard on a lot of the videos and podcasts saying that the fourth quarter is uh, is really bad for FBA because you know because it's slow. It's a lot of people shipping and Amazon's just very slow with receiving and, and 
and takes up on, on, on Amazon. So sure. that makes sense <laughs> with your timing, getting started in late November, early December, it's too late. To take advantage of the Christmas yeah, yeah. rush. Yeah. Although right. the fourth quarter, it's inarguable. There's a lot of activity there. But the nice thing about replens is, as you guys are now starting to discover that we're three months into the new year, mm-hmm. it really does sustain quite well. It's not all about making sales at Christmas time. But right. if you really want to tap into that, spike of activity oh yeah in December, you have to do merchant fulfill because right. it's too late to send your inventory in at the beginning yeah. of december right because like you said it yeah. can take four to six weeks for amazon to receive your inventory around yeah. that yeah. So yeah. yeah that makes total sense why you guys jumped into some merchant fulfill and congratulations on pivoting by the way and figuring out a way to to ramp this up quickly rather than missing out on your first q4 that's right. Yeah. But well, thank God for the pack course in regard to merchant fulfilled or shipping. I'm not sure which one it was. Yeah, I listened to it. I I, I understood how postage uh, work and you know how shipping like how to calculate it. So we were able to estimate the shipping into our our cost of the products, and, right. and that's how we we wanted to try it. And as soon as we post items on Amazon, is they just sell. So it just Everything, you know, that we find, we post itself. So yeah, yeah. it's all part of that fourth quarter. Right. I guess it's like a adrenaline in a way um, where yeah. people buy, 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 you know, and so for gifts. And so, yeah, uh, yeah we were very fortunate to, to to start fourth quarter. But yeah, at the same time, we, we uh, it was a quick learning curve that we had to oh, it uh, sounds uh, like it. adopt. Uh, and so... You know, we had to buy a lot of supplies. Um, yeah. it's, it was a lot of supplies if you're, if you're packing on your own. Um, and it was just the and, two of you, correct? Just, just yeah, it was just the two. two. Working full time. And you both um, still had full time jobs and a three year old yes. who's very active. So, like, yeah. you know, a three year old that is like having three or four kids. So, he's you know, like, at least that's how my son was at three when he was the only kid. It's like yeah. the equivalent of yeah. having three quiet kids, right? Yeah. So, I mean, that's a busy life. And you guys are shipping all this stuff yourself. And and uh, let's just share with the listeners that December, which was your first really full month of doing this with some training. What did you guys sell and what were your margins too? I haven't heard that number yet. Yeah. So in December, we did over um, well, 90, we, is it? 96, uh, close to $100,000 in sales. When we, and with the December, you know, everyone buys everything we post. So we, our margin was like about around, around oh, 25, 30, yeah, 25 yeah. to 30%. So it wow. was, it was fairly high. Um, That's you know, it's just amazing. Yeah. We, you know, you mentioned don't, don't price it at the bottom. We mm-hmm. try to price our items, even not at the bottom and it's still, so, so it's, so we, we were very fortunate. Uh, I mean, the philosophy of the velocity of selling was just so fast and so much and so quick. Yeah. So we always have to replan it, you know, have to, yeah. uh, you know, buy more. It's just, you know, like I say, you know, it's um, sourcing and purchasing is the most important part of the business, you know? And so you always continuously have to, to buy yeah. <laughs> yeah. and um, we stop your inventory. Um, at the same time, you have to find, you have to go wide as well. And so that's what we, we learned yeah. really quick, um, you know? And so, yeah, yeah. Well, in the summer we had to go wide and deep so that we have uh, enough to sell. Yeah, that, that was that was a huge challenge in December was just finding finding items. Um, yeah, in, in December. So so how many different ASINs or, or listings were you guys selling against approximately in December? Um, in December, about, uh, I would say 180 oh, to, no, over 100? Like, yes, maybe 200, 180 to 200 ASIN at the time. That's incredible. Okay, so it, if I was listening to this episode today, let me just restate yeah. the facts. So we're all on the same page here because th- this is a pretty phenomenal start. And it, just to skip to the end, the next part of the story for the listener's sake, their business did trail off a little bit after December, but not much. I mean, you guys are still doing really well. You're putting up some big numbers. So your second full month of doing this with some training, you guys did close to $100,000 at 25% net margins selling 200 different replin products that you discovered. That's phenomenal. With both of you having full-time jobs, yeah. <laughs> that's hustling. Like, do yeah. you guys sleep? <laughs> yeah, pretty much uh, during December, we packed. We woke up at six in the morning. We packed because all these all orders came in night before. We packed and then 
during lunchtime, we uh, before the shipment end, because we you said a, a shipment end day, uh, end time around two o'clock, I think we did another uh, shipment packed again, and then dinner after dinner um, yeah. around like seven or eight o'clock at night, we packed again for all the yeah. orders that came in be, be in between. Um, and working and working full time and sourcing um and, that, and sourcing uh, um so yeah it was a, just the two of you now you didn't have anyone else helping you no helpers no, no helpers. i think towards the end we had her brother that helped us um well just a pack couple a days bit. in december yeah, yeah this is a couple of days but yeah it was throughout the whole december what you know three weeks in december mostly is when it was it was crazy yeah yeah that is amazing you yeah. guys yeah and, and i remember we had to drive to the ups and, and to drop off the, the like we usually have like three or four bags. Like you think about those big garbage bags of stuff to to ship out. So yeah, it was it was it was a crazy December. That is amazing. Okay, so were you sourcing local retail stores or were you doing online sourcing? Uh, both. Yeah. Both. Um, mm-hmm. Probably I would say what sixty percent online or seventy percent online and thirty percent retail at the time. Um, yeah. But we did both. Yeah. Okay. So it was just so much. <laughs> yeah, it was a focus of uh, OA and RA at the same time. And, and how many stores, how many different stores were represented in that? Because you found 200 products. Is this yeah. a handful of stores and you were just going hard on those or are there a, were there several stores? Well, they're, ba- they're mostly big retailers. So we, mm-hmm. you know, and each store has only a certain amount of items. So, uh, you know, I have to travel to many different retail stores to get to get whatever they have. And we, we live in Houston, so Houston is big and there's oh, a lot yeah, of retail, yeah, it's a big city. So, retail stores it's, around. Yeah, there's a lot of, of, of any store. Yeah. Sure. 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 Well, I, I think you're going to inspire some people to reconsider, because like, we hear from a lot of students and maybe there's listeners to this show today that are thinking to themselves, okay, I, I wouldn't mind doing this, but mm-hmm. I don't want to see my product. I don't want to touch my product. I only want to source online mm-hmm. and I want to build a big business fast. What I'm hearing from you guys is if you're willing to hustle, mm-hmm. you can put, you guys, you guys put $25,000 in the bank in one month. And it was your first full month of doing this. That's mm-hmm. net profit. Mm-hmm. That's incredible because you were willing to hustle. You're willing to go to stores. <laughs> you're willing to, to learn the basic tools and strategies. And, you know, I know you guys must be quick learners, but there's still a lot for you guys to learn. No one learns oh, yeah. it all in a month or two. No one. I've been doing this for years and weekly I'm learning things that I slap myself on the forehead. I'm like, how did I not know that before now? I'm learning constantly. But for you guys to put up those kind of numbers that fast, that is a truly impressive success story. But you're willing to do the work. You guys are getting up early, staying up late, putting stuff in packages, doing yeah, your own shipping. Every day, like our weekends are worse like that too. <laughs> Saturday, yeah. um, Sunday. Yeah, it's just every day was just constantly packing and then and, and shipping things out. Well, I, I call that the period of intense focused effort is what I call that. And you can sustain that for a while. You guys couldn't do that for two years. There's no way. It's not sustainable, right? That's one of my favorite words, sustainable. We, mm-hmm. we can put up with a lot for a short period of time, but mm-hmm. we have to drift into a healthy routine against, eventually. But you guys yeah. just jumped in and, and built a beautiful business very quickly. Incredible yeah, so momentum. We, um, yeah, we, we did that um, for December and January and, and almost in the middle of February. And we felt, yeah, like, like you say, you know, you can sustain that for so long, but you have to, mm-hmm. you, you give it out in a way, you know. And so we, that's when we started transitioning more to FBA now. Yeah, so yeah. now you're sending your inventory to Amazon more than you're shipping it yourself. So right. what what percentage is FBA versus FBM now? What percentage is going to Amazon? Well, now it's like uh, 80, 80%. I would say FBA, yeah. 80% FBA and 20% FBM. Okay, yeah. so you're still doing some shipping yourself. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And what yeah. helps you determine what you're going to hold on to and ship yourself? Is it purely a numbers decision, a math decision, or are there certain items that are just easy to yeah. prep so you do it? Oh, yeah, yourself? yeah. You look at... Uh, uh, rep sellers and, and, yeah. you know, keep buy and yeah. but they'll, they'll tell you, you know, like, you know, are you more profitable? You send an FBA or mm-hmm. uh, is it more profitable? We send an FBM, you know? And so that's when you, that's when we make our decision. It is just um, a math yeah. decision for you then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 I got yeah. you. Yeah. You mentioned rev seller. We'll stick a link to that in the show notes. That's a popular tool that helps you determine profitability as you're scrolling around on Amazon on any given item. You just plug in what you had, what you're going to pay to purchase the item. And it tells you, 
FBA profit, FBM profit at the current buy box, which you can easily adjust. And That's right. you guys mentioned that you sell above buy box mm-hmm. quite a bit. Mm-hmm. Talk me through that. What's your strategy there and, and how's that working out for you? I mean, at the beginning, as is, is, is a starter, um, there's a lot of obstacles that you get to, you know, uh, um, ungating a, a lot of brands that you want to get into. And also, you don't have a lot of rating, so starting out. So uh, I think December, as we shipped out so many, um, our, you know, our ratings, and we were selling, you know, and a lot of customers are getting more of the products and they like receiving it faster or they like, you know, product. And so they, they give us more, our ratings go up. I mean, so as your rating goes up, you know, there's, there's a thing where the buy box stats, uh, you know, have rotation, you know, you have to have certain uh, rating, you have to have certain shipping time, you have to have certain price. So that all helped us with, you know, with as our rating increase, we're more, we have to buy box more. So that's why we're able to, you know, price it a little bit higher than, than just the lowest price. And so... That's good. As your reputation improves, as Amazon recognizes your ability to ship quickly with Merchant Fulfill, for example, that that even helps you win the buy box. I strongly encourage sellers to hang on to some of their own Merchant Fulfill activities. Don't send it all into Amazon. If you can hang on and do some Merchant Fulfill yourself, I've seen this happen quite a bit. Amazon likes when you help carry the load of delivering product. They'll reward you with buy box sometimes. You know, now typically most shoppers, and you guys have probably figured this out by now, David and Shirley, but most shoppers tend to buy the FBA option, all things being considered, versus having it shipped from the seller. They'd rather have it shipped from Amazon simply because they're using their prime discount and there's a lot of incentives there. But Amazon does seem to reward those sellers who say, hey, I'm doing both FBA and FBM. You're going to win the buy box a higher percentage of the time by having both options out there, especially if it's a fast moving product. Um, oh yeah. yeah, you just, and you guys have tapped into that. You've benefited. And that's, and that's what happened in, in December. You know, we didn't, send it, we didn't send anything FBA. So everything was- You didn't know FBA, FBA. So, right. Yeah, and so we didn't really look at the FBA people. We were looking at the FBM people competing mm-hmm. with them. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that's what helped us. Uh, you know, of course, as long as the margins are there, uh, we can compete with them. We can go, go lower if we have to. And so that's what helped us build our uh, velocity and build our rating up, uh, mm-hmm. you know, since then. Uh, well, now, yeah, we do more FBA and, and uh, we know, you know, we send FBA things that don't sell before. So, yeah. yeah, they sell in FBA. And so, and also, you know, we, we price in the middle and, you know, they still sell, you know, even though we're not the lowest, you know. Yeah, you so. price in the middle of the pack. If, you know, you got your lowest prices, you got your highest prices and you're somewhere in the middle on fast moving mm-hmm products, that's a very safe place to be. Right. I always say, if it doesn't sell within 30 to 45 days, okay, we can drift our price down and and get rid of it. But hang in the middle of the pack for 30 to 45 days on any ace. And that's especially if it's a fast moving, a high number of drops on Keepa. Now we've mentioned Keepa. I just want to make sure if this is someone's first podcast episode listening to this show, please go listen to episode 369 at silentgym.com. You'll learn about Keepa, why we're so excited about it, what drops are. I'm not going to go into explaining it right now because we've addressed it many times in the past and that episode will explain that. But it sounds like you guys got really good at reading Keepa charts very quickly. How much money did you guys start with as your initial, do you happen to remember like November, December, what did you spend, you know, coaching, inventory, everything? Like what did you guys put into this business? Do you remember what your total investment in was? Yeah, at the beginning we um we put in about what like ten twenty thousand. Well, no, initially it was eight into the business account that we created. Yeah. You created a business um, account with eight, and that's what you bought your inventory yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, yeah, and in all the all the uh, the tools and the uh, the training, and so yeah, we started out like that, and then December yeah. um, is when we added more. Yeah. yeah. Because we needed more, yeah. we needed more, yeah, more fast. But um, yeah, so we add another what? Because it's just it's just a hassle of like trying to, and and also at the beginning, you know how Amazon holds so much money. Yes. they we don't sell. release uh, any of the the sales that or the money that we we sold. So we we had to put in more. We added another uh, forty thousand or so, yeah. just to have it in the bank account, so we don't have to worry about 
the, the cash maximum flow. limit. Yeah, the, the cash, cash flow. flow. Yeah, because yeah. Amazon, as a new seller, especially if you're doing a lot of merchant fulfill, I was I was just kind of thinking through. You guys probably had to add significant cash because yeah. Amazon's not going to release that money for six to eight weeks sometimes after yeah. the sale is made. It's just when you're new, uh, they take yeah, a while. You're, right? yeah. you're new. You're doing merchant fulfill. You're going at a high volume. Amazon's going to hold on to that money and make sure they've got happy customers who are keeping that yeah. stuff past the return window, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. So that's that meant in order for you guys to sell almost a hundred thousand dollars <laughs> in December, you guys had to have put in some significant cash. Yeah, so I think about like thirty percent of that. So yeah, about thirty percent. So yeah. that's why we had to add another forty uh, in December, yeah, right, to cover all the inventory and. Uh, shipment, uh, shipping fees, and um, and, tra- and yeah. coaching, and then training, and software too. <laughs> so, so that yeah. that was a significant investment. I just wanted to make sure we pointed that out to folks. But an investment that has paid off beautifully. But, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, it's, we, we already, have to, like, yeah, already. Yeah, we have to, yeah. you, you guys have have more than made back your investment plus quite a bit, and yeah. you've got a great. Uh, what, what's your ROI? I've got to imagine it's pretty healthy the way you guys are doing your business. You've got 25% net margins, but what's your ROI? Have you calculated that overall? No, no. I think we learned initially real fast, especially with the replan course with Jimmy, I think. Jimmy yeah, mm-hmm. Smith, I think he mentioned that just profit margin because we, we learned real fast that the business is all about profit margin. Yes. Um, it's good to have ROI, but the most important thing is profit margin is what you take home yeah. um, after all the uh, sell, you know, the your cost price, the selling. Amazon fees, um, yeah. shipping fees. So yeah. The, yeah, the thing I like it. about ROI though is is you can kind of compare it to other investments that you might have made. Like if we had to put that same amount of money somewhere else, what would it be worth now? And that's how you can kind of compare apples to apples with ROI. And if twenty five percent net margin, your ROI has got to be at least sixty to eighty percent mm-hmm. on average. Yeah, yeah, minimum. Yeah, yeah. 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 And yeah. It, that's a pretty incredible investment. Now you guys have had to hustle. But yeah. that's a beautiful business. Like that business that you guys have built would stand up against any other business model out there in any other niche. Turning a pool of money into 25% net profit margin that fast. I mean, annualizing your ROI, we're talking an incredible trajectory for your business. So even though things slowed down a little bit after the Christmas rush, obviously, let's get into 2023 and talk about January and February now. Uh, how how is it going? It's still going really well, from what I saw. Talk yeah. us through what you observed and how that yeah. transition went for you guys. Yeah, and of course, you know the the first couple of weeks things died down, uh, you know, dramatically, okay. and so and we we, we kind of like expected it, you know, because it, it was Christmas, so it's, there's no longer Christmas. But then um, Thanksgiving came around. I mean, no, sorry, uh, Valentine's came around. Valentine's Day, sure. Um, sure. Yeah. So yeah, that that helped us. You know, we also did FBM mostly too. Yeah. I think there's a rest period. I think there's a rest period after Christmas. I don't know, but yeah, things started to pick up. So we we did feel nervous. We we felt nervous. We thought everything that we have sold or we have done is seasonal. So we we were very nervous. Mm -hmm. But, you know, February come around and March came around. And, you know, I think we're pretty steady. So we... We, we we thought oh it's it's probably not that seasonal after all it's it's probably just you know it's just that there is a peak of course but but we're doing pretty steady hey we'll get back to the show in just a second but i've got to tell you about a great sponsor who's just joined us i'm talking about seller board this is a very popular service used by many Amazon sellers in our community because they understand how important it is how crucial it is to know your numbers How do you know how profitable you are? All those fees, the different expenses, the cost of goods sold, how do you track it all? Seller board is phenomenal. Starting as low as just $15 a month with a two month trial on top of that, you really need to check these guys out. Get over to silentgym.com slash numbers. Again, silentgym.com slash numbers. It's time to know your numbers. It's an accurate profit analytics software tool just for Amazon sellers. They've been doing this since 2017. It is a really cool tool doing some things that I'm unaware of anyone else doing. So the pricing starts at $15. Like I said, get your two-month trial at silentgym.com slash numbers. 
you know, February come around and March came around and, you know, I think we're pretty steady. So we we, we, we thought, oh, it's, it's probably not that seasonal after all. It's, it's probably just, you know, it's just that there is a peak, of course, but, but we're doing pretty steady. Now, what yeah, types right. of items? Yeah, I know you guys are selling some seasonal items, you know, like you mentioned Valentine's Day, for example. And, and mm-hmm. most sellers, I would say, don't concern themselves with holidays at all. Mm-hmm. You know, we're not going to sell Easter stuff at Easter or Valentine's Day. We, we're just going to sell the same boring, you know, stuff. Mm-hmm. That, that, like for us, we sell hardware year round uh, quite a bit. Clothing, you know, mm-hmm. the, the, you can sell year round shoes, that sort of thing, you know, year mm-hmm. round makeup year round. That's most people who are in this business. It sounds like you guys are tapping a little bit into the seasonal opportunities as well, which is great, mm-hmm. especially if you're willing to do some merchant fulfill, a huge opportunity. But tell me how much of your business isn't seasonal dependent? As far as you mentioned, you had 200 ASINs in December. Like how many yeah. do you have now that aren't seasonal? Like they're not benefiting from Easter or Valentine's Day or yeah, well, we, we initially thought they're seasonal, but they're actually not that seasonal. So I would say majority of our items are not seasonal. Yeah, now as we not, thought. not seasonal. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So uh, how, many ASINs, like a, a, how many non-seasonal ASINs do you have now, would you say? Uh, we never looked at the total yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> About 280 ASINs right now because there's a lot of drops and it's just, you know, ASINs come in and out. Yeah, they come and go, yeah. Yeah, yes. but uh, I mean... I wouldn't say they are seasonal anymore. I, I feel confident that they're not seasonal items anymore. That's great. So I just feel like when when there are more sales in December or there's, you know, during the holidays, it's more sales. Yeah. But not it, it's a shopping season, which, which right. impacts in a positive way all of us. Yeah. But it's not that you're selling seasonal items necessarily. Right. Right. right, just more people are online shopping, so your business right. benefits from the the boring non seasonal items that you're selling. Mm-hmm. Great. I just wanted to make sure and clarify that for people, so we didn't leave anyone yeah. thinking, well, they sold some Christmas stuff at Christmas, and they sold some Valentine's yeah. Day stuff at <laughs> Valentine's, and and that explains their numbers. No, you guys are finding great boring replens, right? Like, give us some examples of some of the items you're selling without giving away or creating competitors for yourself. What are some of the items you guys have found and that are, they're selling well for you? But we sell anything and everything. We yeah, sell right. health, beauty, you know, groceries, yeah, yeah. Um, toys, clothing, clothing yeah, so. shoes. Yeah, we sell pretty much anything that we can find. Anything that looks good as a replan <laughs> on the Keepa chart. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. That, yeah. Exactly. That's the business. That's be- You guys are doing it beautifully. I love it. So are you still... Uh, sourcing quite a bit every day, looking for new ASINs? Is is that something? And again, it's just the two of you doing that? Well, well now we have... Yeah, um, so we we actually uh, hired a couple of VAs. Um, and so, yeah, yeah. I think we did our first VA, uh, hired first VA back in November. I think. Yeah, but it wasn't really... I mean, we, we didn't know what to expect from a VA. He's, he's yeah. still helping us, but I think I... The thing is, he, he find an item... And I just find variations of that item around his finding. So it it helps a lot. And so mostly he he did contribute to the finding. Then we we find so many different, you know, just right. different from his variation and the sellers. We just it's just it, I feel like it's it's like unwinding. Like once you find something, a good product. You can find so many good products around that product. It's yeah, just amazing. Yeah. Dive, dive into it. And I yeah. love what you just said about when you, you know, it's the same thing I tell to people when they're uh, looking at buy lists, which I don't advise, especially if you're new, please don't rely on buy lists. But if you do get into a buy list, which is simply a list of products that someone else has determined are, are good ASINs for you to take a look at. Don't rush out and buy all of them. Use it as a starting point to do your own research. You really need to know how to research these things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It sounds like that's what you guys are doing with the the ASINs that that you know that come in from your virtual assistant. And you know, we've helped people find VAs and train VAs for people, but ultimately it is about that relationship and working back and forth and building a process. And it sounds like you guys are still really good at finding your own ASINs. And, yeah, and you, yeah. How much time do you spend doing that, like per day or per week? What would you say? 
I, I'll say my wife is the expert. <laughs> so she's the one on top of that. Yeah. 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 I mean, I find ASINs when I'm in bed, you know, uh, just getting ready for bed and just using my pretty much 80% or 70, oh. 70, 80% of the ASINs we found is from my phone in bed. I just need a Keepa and Amazon Seller Central. And I was just, Able Let, to. Let's talk about that for a minute, Shirley. I love it because it, I feel the same way. And mm-hmm. I talk to hundreds of students. I mean, you know, we've, we've had 9,000 students come through our coaching program. And it seems like people either get it or they don't. And they just, it doesn't quite make sense to them yet. So when I hear, when they hear people like me say, there's ASINs everywhere, there's replins everywhere. They hear someone like you say that they almost get frustrated like, what are they doing? How could it be that simple? Talk me through, what are you looking for? What are you doing when you're on your phone and you're like laying in bed and you're finding ASINs? Like, what exactly are you doing? What do you, you and, and I can do the same thing. I know exactly what you're saying. Although I kind of like to have Rev Seller pulled up, which is a Chrome extension. You can't have that on your phone. At least last time I looked. <laughs> I don't know, maybe they do have an extension for it now. I don't think they do. But, you know, I like to have that as, but you can do the math pretty quick in your head, mm-hmm. you know, once you get used to it. Mm-hmm. So what are you doing exactly? You're on amazon.com, mm-hmm. I'm assuming. And yeah. walk me through it. I usually just look at a brand that, that, you know, and then I drill down on the brand. Look, there's, it just pops up. Like good ASINs just pops out. And from that ASIN, I just, dig down in, if there's variations then i can find different variation of those products and when you say um, when you say it pops out surely uh, i know how i would answer that question like what do you mean it pops out what do you mean pops. what do you mean it pops out like what do what do you notice about a product and and i feel like i've got a pretty good internal alarm as well like i can walk through a store especially when i'm on vacation yeah walk through a national chain and like that's a replin that's a replay that right. it's just because stuff that I've never noticed before. Right. Because yeah. I'm thinking, okay, it's, it, they have it in this region. They don't have that stuff in where I live. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking there's some opportunity there. That's kind of what pops off the shelf at a retail store for me. But when you're looking at the app and you're just scrolling around, looking at brands, how does it pop? <laughs> They're just special. They're special. Not right? big to me. <laughs> Well, let me try to help you, Shirley. Okay, because here's what happens to me. I think to myself, that looks a little overpriced. Yeah. Or I think to myself, that doesn't look like a professionally, nationally branded item necessarily. I wonder, you know, if there's only a few reviews. Mm -hmm. uh, That's something else I look for sometimes. You know, there's under 100 reviews but there's a lot of buying activity associated with it. You know, that's one that might have potential. There's a lot of little things that could make it pop off the page at me. Although a lot of the replens we sell are household name brand stuff that's been around for years and sells thousands of units a month. There's just hidden ASINs mm-hmm. for that product. You know, maybe that product appears on dozens of ASINs and some of those ASINs are good replens. The rest aren't. So that's yeah. the game. But, but it's, I always enjoy that because there is a frustration, isn't there, Shirley, in trying to yeah. verbalize what do you mean it just jumps out at you? What do you mean? Well, after you look at enough, you just recognize it. I kind of equate it, surely, to like I do a lot of, I've done a lot of fishing growing up and love fishing. And I, I like to think that I can kind of look at a lake and kind of spot like, okay, the opportunity is over there. Yeah. Like, you know, I see a few dead trees hanging in the water. The wind is blowing this way. Like, I think if I have an hour to fish this lake, I'm going to spend my time right over there. And, and when you're, when, when you're asked to explain that to someone else, you're like, I just, that's my instinct. I just feel like if yeah. I was a fish, that's where I'd be. But it takes time to develop those instincts. And, but you develop them very quickly, which is why I'm interested to hear you kind of verbalize. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've always been a shopper. Yeah, she's always there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, I just, I, I, I may have recognized things a little bit quicker. I don't know. Like when I go, like, like you mentioned, go to a retail store and I'm like, yeah, that, let's look at, look up that item and, and they're hit. I'm not sure why, like how I, I, it's just, it's just speaking to me. And that's, that's how we're able to do a lot of retail, purchase a lot of retail items because of that. It's just go and just stare and see what, what just pops up. Do, do you take store shelf pictures and research off those? Uh, no, we, I don't, I don't. Yeah. Well, you probably should. I would, I would uh-huh. say, suggest like, 
uh, I often say when, if, if I had a couple hours to find as many replins as I could, what would you do, right? For me, if I wanted to find as many winning replins as fast as I could, I would get a handful of store shelf pictures. All I'd need is five or six store shelf pictures mm-hmm. from a local retail store and just research off of those for a couple mm-hmm. hours. I'm going to find so many winners. I, ideally, when I'm taking a store shelf picture, I like to see a barcode that I can mm-hmm. zoom in on and actually see. I want to know how many ounces. Is it 16.3 or is it 18.9 ounces? Yeah. Right? Like You need to know you got the exact product. And then from there, I can dig in and I can know, hey, I can go right back to that same store where this picture is from and they've got the inventory right now. I could mm-hmm. list it and sell it. If I'm willing to do Merchant Fulfill, I could have sales an hour from now if I find good ASINs, right? Mm-hmm. So that's yeah. that's how I like to do. So I'd encourage you, Shirley, give that a shot. Take some store shelf pictures next time you're out. And yeah. uh, it just I can have a, a basketball game on TV and just sit there with my laptop and find winning mm-hmm. replants mm-hmm. with that strategy. Okay. I'll yeah, give it a shot. I mean, you're obviously doing something right, but as someone who just kind of is developing those instincts, I'd love to hear how that works out for you. I think you'd enjoy that process. Yeah, for sure. Great. Well, this is a great episode. I, you know, it's it's kind of mind blowing. I've heard a lot of really good success stories over the years. We've done hundreds of interviews, but I don't know that I've met a couple yet that started coaching towards the beginning of a month and then did a hundred thousand dollars that same month. Now, granted, it was a Christmas, but still. <laughs> With two full-time jobs and a you know kid that's full of energy, you guys pulled off, and and your momentum has continued. Let's talk specific numbers because we've got two full months since Christmas happened. We've got January and February. How what were your numbers there? How did they go? January, and what's working did, uh, now? Yeah, yes. I think January was over seventy thousand, mm-hmm. mm-hmm. and that was a lot of FBM as well. A lot of uh, FBM, a lot of merchant fulfill. Yeah. That's right, and then. Uh, yeah, um, mm-hmm. February was um, six. Six, over sixty, and yeah, this this month is pushing over sixty as well. And yeah. so um, we're continuing continuing that as we transition over to the FBA route with a lot of uh, replants. Yeah, and so yeah, that's that's where we are right now. That's great. Um, well, you guys are on a, a beautiful trajectory, and I'm excited to see where your business goes. This is one of the fastest ramp up success stories that I've ever had on the show. It's it's yeah. tremendous. I mean, it's you know, they, most people a month or two in are still kind of learning the basics. You guys are putting a lot of money in the bank, so congratulations on that. But I have to emphasize, a lot of hustle went into this, and you guys yeah. have great attitudes and smiles on your faces, and you're enjoying the process. But you guys have been working hard. I don't want to underemphasize how much time went into and effort went into what you guys have accomplished. Yeah. But the so, opportunity yeah. is there. It's obvious. Mm-hmm. The opportunity yeah. is there. Uh, yeah, we, and we see that, you know, we see the opportunity and, uh, yeah. And, um, you know, sure, like we, we feel like we've accomplished, um, but we're not, we just started. <laughs> so we're, we're always continuing to think of what's next, uh, yeah. of how to grow, grow our business bigger, scale it, uh, scale it, make it more sustainable. Automate. Uh, yeah. Automated. Yeah, and automated. Scale. That's the next step. Yeah. yeah. Automated and, uh, automated so that we can go on doing the growth side of it, you know, like, yeah. The, the beautiful and thing is, there's people who are further down the road than you guys are, who have completely outsourced every element. And I would encourage you, Shirley, hang on to that piece of of you that just has those good instincts and always sourcing as much as you can, just to contribute to the business and, and to to fuel it. Right? You'll find other people capable of doing those things. But if that's something that you're really good at that resonates with you, yeah, keep pouring into the business. But everything else you guys are talking about, someone else could and arguably should be doing eventually to where you guys are just monitoring the numbers on a report Mm -hmm. and your business is growing and scaling. You have virtual assistants helping with every aspect of the business. We have a good number of students in our community who have gotten to that point. So yeah, well, let's go whatever direction you guys want to go. I feel like there's some other areas we could dive into. What other questions or topics do you guys have on your mind that we could dive into? So we're not sure. um, I mean, right now we're, we're working with Nathan to uh, create a brand trademark. Oh, cool. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So we're working with Nathan and, and Michael Gray. Humming, hummingbird. Yeah. Yeah. Um, which is also a service. <laughs> yeah. That's another one of our services. Okay. So you guys are getting into Humminbird. Like you guys are really going all in on this. That's great. Okay. Oh, yeah. I'll stick a link for the listeners to Humminbird in the show notes. It's our branding, brand registered, trademark, legal, accounting. You know, we've got all like all the services that kind of serve this community kind of branded into it hummingbird.com but yeah so you guys are starting to talk about building a branded bundle then 
That's Sorry. right. Yes, Sorry. yes. So we, we've, um, you know, as we source and we see all these different um, ASINs that have, that are branded, you know? And so, mm-hmm. you know, they have like a pen that has a staff that has a brand or they have... Not yeah. necessarily like that, yeah. but yeah. Yeah, so it's, um, we, but, you know, we want to get into branded bundling because we want less competition. We're tired of people coming in and then taking, you know, the price. And so... Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. that's a reality. Like Being a reseller, a... you're selling stuff anyone else can sell. So like that's you right. mentioned earlier, it's, it's a constant hunt for new ASINs and some die off and some are added in. That's the churn of that model, but it's a great foundation. So you're talking about building a bundle that only you can sell because it has a uniquely branded item added into. The module, I'm assuming you guys have been through the proven brand building module inside of Mm -hmm. proven Amazon course. And that led you to think, okay, let's get some branded bundle ideas going for ourselves. Right. Right. And then, you know, that's that's our next step. But we're not sure, you know, because everything we're doing right now is at home. We're not sure when is we ready for a warehouse or I know, I know it's great to work in from home, but at the same time, I think our goal is to scale, scale the business. So yeah. I mean, when do you think is a, a good indication? What of, do you know when you're, when it's time yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's to, to get a warehouse? Yeah. To get a warehouse and to get some space. That's a good question. I could tackle it from a few different directions. I guess it, if you're, if you're well-funded, if you're well-funded and the money's not an, an issue, as far as you know, the rent isn't going to really stretch you the lease. Typically, when you when you get space, they're going to want to sign a longer lease. Like when you're renting a home or an apartment, one year lease is common. You're going to get into a longer agreement than that. Typically, when you're talking about yeah. a business warehouse lease, they're going to want to talk about you know two or five year even leases. So it's a pretty serious commitment. So I tend to be conservative on all these things. It's kind of like when people say, you know, how many months worth of expenses should we have in the bank before we leap into full-time with this business, Mm -hmm. right? That's one of the questions. So I tend to be very conservative. I say, especially if you're married, you each come up with a number, how many months reserve should we have? If, if, you know, maybe the wife says six months and the husband says 11 months. Well, we're going to go with 11 months. We're going to be conservative there, right? So I like to be the same thing. When you're making big decisions that kind of lock you in, you're kind of those jumping off points, getting a warehouse, for example, I like to see you very well positioned and and having kind of sought out every other possible opportunity that doesn't lock you into a two or five year agreement, such as I just interviewed yesterday for this podcast, a couple who he works the business, his wife doesn't, but a really sweet friend slash, slash family member who lives nearby, kind of across the street with a big house and plenty of room in her garage. That's the warehouse. And she works in the business too, part-time. And she's retired. She's 70 plus. And, but she just is thrilled to have the business right there. And she even hires neighborhood kids to come help. It's a great interview. It will probably come out around the same time as your interview will be on the show. That's a nice in-between step. Does that make sense? So you can start to just wade into those waters instead of jumping off the high dive into the deep end of the pool right. and signing a five-year lease on space that you'll probably outgrow anyway, (laughs) right? If things go well. So wade into it is my advice. Live with the inconvenience of having it in your house a little more than you'd like Mm -hmm. until it's so obvious that you're ready to jump. And and then maybe look for some other creative options too before you sign a big lease, because that is the part that, you know, you owe that money legally. If you sign a five-year lease and then decide, hey, we need something bigger, or we should have just kept Mm -hmm. this at home, right? You still owe that money. So Get into a warehouse slowly is my advice. Or even sublease. Look for people who have more space than they need. Okay. Who can, you know, maybe fence off in their warehouse 500 square foot for you just to store your stuff and to come in and process. Put your table and your tape and your boxes in there. And, right? But be very slow to sign your own lease. Find other creative solutions is my mm-hmm. advice, typically. Okay. Great advice. Thank yeah. you. Good. Yeah, good. Yeah, think think creative solutions. The thing I love about this business, about e-commerce in general, I've been doing it 20 years, is for every challenge you run into, if you haven't brainstormed five or seven creative solutions for whatever challenge you're facing, you need to spend more time thinking about it and talking to others about it. Yeah. Very rarely are you trapped in a corner where all you've got is option A or B. That's it. Yeah. it very rarely. There's almost always option C, D, E, and F if you do a little bit of research and, and you can yeah. lower your risks and still continue to, your growth track 
uh, lower your inconveniences. There's always creative solutions out there. We've seen a lot of them. I think that's the benefit of listening to this podcast is it just kind of drops those creative solutions on people and saves them a lot of heartache and pain as well. Kind of like, you know, your journey could be very differently. I mean, let's go back in time just five or six months. You know, Shirley's bouncing around on YouTube and sees one of these videos about launching a private label product, right? Mm -hmm. If you went down the path that 95% of the people who try to launch a private label as their first attempt, right now, your story would very likely be, we've spent sixty dollars to $70,000. We've got a house full of product we don't know what to do with. <laughs> We're trying to market it. We've already spent $8,000 on pay-per-click ads and it's not working yet. We're barely breaking even selling this stuff. What do we do now? Your story could be there. It's not. You're talking about, should we get a warehouse or not? We got 25% net margins on a $100,000 a month, our second month in, right? So I love the trajectory of your story. So there's no need to have a, a sense of urgency that says, hey, we got to do this now. We got to do this now. No, you, you've built something beautiful in just a few months. Enjoy the trajectory. Enjoy the momentum. Make little adjustments. Don't take big risks. It's not necessary. And just continue where you guys will be a year from now is going to be amazing. But chip away at it nice and slow. Slow and steady wins the race is, is a motto you've heard us say around here a lot. Yeah, yeah. So pace yourselves. Take Sundays off. If at all possible, <laughs> now that's, we can. We have, we have Saturdays and Sundays off. <laughs> that's great. I mean, that's how you sustain your momentum over a long period of time, right? That favorite word of mine, one of my favorite words, sustainable, right? So you've, you guys are building yeah. in some healthy habits now. I love it. Yeah, good question, Shirley. Hopefully, I was helpful in my answer. No, that's yes, right. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess the other one is, um, uh, like you mentioned, you know, we have helpers now, and so we're looking for more ways to hire or to find help so that we can free our time to grow the business. So I guess, um, I guess the question is, um, are there any SOPs or do you guys have any any processes and procedures for like, um, you know, admins or anyone anyone that we need hire to do the business? Yeah, are there yeah. resources available? We're coaching student. Yeah, you know? we can ask. Uh, coach as well. Yes, yeah. <laughs> absolutely have that conversation with your coach. But I can tell you that we've done a mastermind with Jimmy Smith a handful of times in the past. And those SOPs are just invaluable. It's designed for people who are at the thirty to $50,000 a month mark, if I recall correctly, maybe a little less than that, but are just looking to scale into the next steps. What are those standard operating procedures, SOPs for those next phases of growth? for people who are doing this business at a, at a scale. So talk to your coach about that. We'll see if we can get get you guys either into that group uh, for the next time we run it or get some of those uh, SOPs over to you and make sure you're in the Replens Facebook group as well. So because you guys are proven Amazon course students, there's a dedicated Facebook group. Are you guys in there just for Replen sellers? No, <laughs> Sorry, we, we weren't aware. Yes. Yeah. So there's there's a few thousand people in there that do this business full time at all different levels. And you're going to find some resources in there that aren't in the bigger Facebook group. The free group okay. mentioned at silentgym.com, there's 72,000 members in there. And we talk about all manner of business models. And replens is certainly a, a popular theme. Yeah. But there's another Facebook group that we run that's just for full time replen sellers. And it, no additional cost for you guys. And there's a lot of SOPs and all kinds of new content since you're in study mode. Uh, you're going to okay. really enjoy getting into that that arena over there. And uh, yeah, Jimmy Smith runs that group, the guy that created the replens yeah. content for our community. So yeah. you'll benefit greatly okay. from that. That's a good next step. Yeah. Yeah. To contact our support team or just ask your coach about it and we'll get okay. you. Yeah. Very okay. good. Any other questions for me? I think we're good. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, this is this has been a great episode. Now, I, I think you guys had some tips for the listeners too. Is that something you guys had prepared for us? Any tips on your mind or any anything else? Yeah, yeah. There's a few tips that I, I have. Um, Great. Okay. You know, just, just get coaching. You know, as soon as you can. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you can afford it. Uh, that's the the one main thing. You know, it helps accelerate your your business. Yeah. Just don't just don't be afraid of of um, you know of doing anything. I think I, I mentioned there's a, a Nike model. Just just do it. You know. Don't be afraid. Uh, once you once you do it, it's it's actually pretty simple. <laughs> yeah. Nothing about this business is is, is hard. Um, mm-hmm. and so, um, yeah, yeah. And again, you know, keep, uh, keep us very important. Um, learn so, keep uh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still learning every time I sit down, every time I see some new keep training of any kind, I just soak it up. Uh, oh, yes, yeah. 
it, go listen to podcast episode 369 for the listeners. I know you guys probably have, but that really explains why we love Keep It, what it does that's so different around here. And there's always more to learn. That is a robust tool. Are you guys using any of the advanced research tools or features? Of oh, yeah. 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 But, yeah. yeah, but Keepa is the key. I mean, I've, <laughs> for me, I mean, for me, all I need is Keepa and Amazon Solo Central. I really don't need other fancy tools, oh, really. Yeah. But yeah, Keepa is, is just amazing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah surely when people say, well, how, how much is it going to cost for me to, to get into this business? But, you know, break it down for me. What, what are the expenses involved here in, in testing and proving that this is viable? I say, you, you need Keepa. It's about $25 a month. You need to prove an Amazon course, you know, a little over a dollar a day. You need, yeah. a, you need a Seller Central account, you know, which I suggest you go pro, especially if you plan on getting serious about this. And that's going to cost you, what, $30, $40 a month. You're, under, you're way under 100 bucks a month. Test it out for a couple months. Mm-hmm. You're going to see. They, you, you're you going to have proof of concept and that's the only money you've put in. You're going to need a few shipping supplies as you find your winning inventories that's and right. boxes and tape and such, right? Some labels. We'll talk you through all that in the proven Amazon course, you know, but you're finding profitable inventory at that point. You've you've got a viable business concept at that point. So yes, it's just not an expensive thing. And I, I love what you just said, David. It's, it's, it's simple. No part of this is complex, but there's always more to learn. Always, you'll always be surprised. Like, wow, oh, yeah. that's such a great insight. I had no idea. Uh, so, you know, the little tips you'll pick up. And I know you guys had mentioned you're not sure if you're coming to the conference or not. I'm trying to talk you into it in July, the proven conference, right? But you guys have got to do, if, if it's any way possible to get there, because what I've seen happen time and time again, especially for a couple like you guys, who already have some momentum, your business is going to just leap forward six to nine months in three days. You're going to come home with just a notebook full of stuff like we've got to do this now type of concepts because there's always more to learn. Now, it's a very newbie friendly event too. If there's anyone listening thinking, oh, you got to be have momentum. No, it's very newbie friendly for new sellers too. But for someone like you guys, you're six months by then, you'll be six, nine months into your business and you've got momentum. Oh, you'd benefit so greatly. So I'd love if you yeah. guys could work it out to be there, I think you'd benefit greatly. That's the Proven Conference. We'll stick a link in the show notes for those who don't know, July 6th through 8th of 2023 in Columbus, Ohio. So if okay. we've got to drive a car to your guys' house and get there, I just might be tempted because <laughs> it would benefit so much. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll try. We'll consider consider that. That. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll see what we can make happen. Let me know what incentives I got to send you guys to talk you into it. But... Uh, well, anything else on your minds today as we wrap this one up? This has been a tremendous episode, guys. You guys are a delight. You've just been smiling the whole time, and I can just tell you're loving this business. Yes, yes. We definitely, I mean, all these hustles that you mentioned, it just doesn't feel like it's a hustle when you love what you do. So that's what we're, we're, we're loving the whole process. I mean, there's, there's you know, there's um, a lot of, we hit the wall sometimes, but we love it. We love it. We love the challenges and we just love the hard work and we just love the results. So we just love, yeah, love it's doing like, it. Where can you find a business that you can invest in that you're, that you're profitable within, uh, you know, the second or third months? <laughs> and, you know, like most businesses we talk about, go, oh, maybe we try this for a couple of years, uh, but most businesses like, well, it takes five years to break even, you know? Yeah. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, we have able to accomplish that in like, two, three months, you know? And so, but you know, it's a constant reinvestment, of course, with this with our business. Um, and so, but yeah, it's a business that you can grow and make it your own. Mm-hmm. And so, it's the way to go there with us. Yeah, uh, yeah, we see the potential. Uh, thank you so much for for sharing your story. I think you guys are going to inspire a whole lot of people. And I know you've inspired me. This is my favorite part of what I do. I've got a lot of different income streams using the internet in many different ways, a lot of responsibilities and businesses that I'm working on. But if you added all of it up and said, "What's your favorite part of what I do?" For a living, it's interviews like this, couples like you, seeing their life trajectory shift, mm-hmm. the new possibilities opening up, adding validation that all this hard work we've put into the systems we've developed and the tools and the, the things that we've brought together, the great coaching team and the people, you know, you yes. guys succeeding is validation of all that hard work. So it's very rewarding for me as well. And I'm thrilled for you guys. Uh, I'm a huge fan. I can't wait to see where you guys go next. And I have a feeling you guys are probably on a bit of a trajectory for leadership as well, if you're interested in it, because you really are doing an incredible job. So it's an honor to meet you guys today. Thank you, David and Shirley. You guys have been awesome. 
Thank you so thank you, much for having, having us. Yeah, yeah thank, you. thank you. Well, as we wrap this episode up, I'm going to talk to the listeners who joined us today. I'm sure you benefited greatly from the tips and the strategies and the encouragement. Uh, if you are listening to us today, maybe on, like on an iTunes or a podcast, trust me, these guys smiled the whole time. <laughs> they are having a blast, as was I with this interview today. Uh, but thank you for hanging out with us today on Silent Sales Machine Radio. And I just one last reminder, I'd love for you to come meet dozens of the success story guests that we've had on this show. If this was the first time you listened to our show today, we've got dozens of recent episodes, hundreds over the past couple of years of interviews with our students just like this, using the proven Amazon course to launch and grow a beautiful business, in many cases, using our coaching program as well. But we just love bringing this free content to you. Hopefully it's encouraged and inspired you. And on behalf of the whole team that puts these episodes together, God bless you, Business Building Warrior. We'll have another great episode for you again very soon. We'll talk to you then. Hey, thanks for hanging out today. Before I let you go, one short reminder. We are so grateful to our new sponsor to this program, Seller Board. If you haven't checked them out yet, get over to silentgym.com slash numbers. This is the software that tells you if you're profitable or not. It helps you track all of your expenses, your KPIs, sales, refunds, advertising costs, all of it. Profit, loss. This is tremendous software that fills a gap in the marketplace. Many successful sellers in our community are using this tool to help them know which of their products are profitable and which ones aren't. You'll love Sellerboard for just $15 a month starting. You can really dial in and know how your business is doing. Silentgym.com slash numbers. Talk to you next time.